Hi folks! I'm going to try and take a little of the fear out of math by showing how I've used it for a few things. Like my solar tower experiments, my crystal radios, and to design a solar cooker, just to name a few examples. My first example is the math I used for my solar tower experiments. The goal here was to use my Fresnel lens and sunlight to heat air. That hot air would then be used to turn a PC fan. I started out not bothering to look for any formulas. I wanted to see what I could learn without. And so I made these first three versions with poor results. Then I went crazy with insulation and made this dismal failure. So finally I started searching online for help and ended up on Wikipedia's chimney page which had this formula. It calculates the flow rate, the amount of air coming out of the chimney each second. It uses things like the cross-sectional area of the chimney, the height of the chimney, and the temperatures inside and outside the chimney. These were all things I could experiment with in my solar tower. C and G in the formula are constants, meaning their values are fixed and I have no control over them. Now the values I could experiment with are all being multiplied together, but do any have a larger effect than the others? This is a square root sign. What does it do to the things under it? Well, if you take the square root of 4, you get 2. If you take the square root of 9, you get 3. If you take the square root of 100, you get 10. So clearly anything under the square root sign will be made smaller than they started out. So the area, which is not affected by the square root, could have a larger effect on the result. I say could because the stuff under the square root sign could be so big that even the square root of it is big. But trying out some simple values, the result isn't very big. So the area seems like the first choice to play with, and in my final version I used a much larger cross-sectional area than my first versions. But it's hard for my Fresnel lens to heat up a really huge cross-sectional area of air, so I went with a long tube and higher temperatures. The end result was that I couldn't turn a PC fan, but at least I could turn a paper turbine. Next, for my crystal radios, I needed coils. These are loops of wire wrapped around something with a few or many turns. Here's a formula for the inductance of this type of coil. Some of the things you can play with are the number of turns, the cross-sectional area, and the length. One thing you see right away is that the number of turns is squared. That means whatever number you put there will be multiplied by itself to get a much larger number. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 10 times 10 is 100. So squaring the number of turns can make a larger number, which can have a large effect on the result. Another thing to note is that the length is under this line. This means that after you've multiplied out everything above the line, you then divide it by the length. What effect does that have on the result? Well, 1 over 2 means divide by 2. If we divide this circle into two pieces, we get parts of this size. If we try 1 over 4 instead, then dividing the circle into four pieces, we get parts this size. If we try 1 over 8, then we get even smaller pieces. So the larger the number below the line, the smaller the result. That means a longer length makes the result, the inductance, smaller. If we want a larger inductance, then we could try a shorter length. Of course, that means you'll have fewer turns, so you'll have to play around with the numbers a bit until you get something practical that you can make. Some other formulas I seem to use a lot are the circumference of a circle and the area of a circle, both of which I used for making this cone solar cooker. For crystal radios, I use the coil inductance formula, but also the capacitance of a capacitor and the resonant frequency of a coil and capacitor in parallel. Anyway, those are a few examples where I find math useful. Leave a comment below telling where you use math so others can see how useful it can be. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes a video about my final solar tower tests, another showing how to make your own capacitors, where I talk a lot about the formula for capacitance, and one where I use math to design a cone reflector for a solar cooker. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.